Hello Copper Fam, I'm David Vianic and today I'm talking to you a little bit about Kick TV. Now as you may know, Kick TV and Copper 90 have joined forces. Yeah we have, but hold your horses. We're still both gonna exist as separate channels creating some amazing different content. But it does mean that we'll be working more closely together to bring you the best of everything that we do. Tell me a little bit about your football career, man. I started playing when I was five, kicking the ball around with my Danish grandfather. Uh, got the bug. There was something unique about it, something I enjoyed more than playing baseball or American football or basketball. And went from there, high school, college, then got into the pros, all the way to the World Cup. And How was that feeling, man? That was fantastic. Uh, I got named uh, to the team, I think it was a shock to a lot of American journalists. There was, I think they did a, like a poll of like 30 journalists in America about who's going to make the team. And I, there was only one that picked me. So when I got named to the team, it was kind of like a big F you to everybody, like fingers <laughs> out, let's do this. So one of our guys got red carded against Italy and I got in and then held my own and did yeah. well and got to play against Ghana. So I just made the most of my opportunities. What's interesting about that game was I have a man crush on Andrea Pirlo. <laughs> So we that doesn't everybody. Yeah, yeah. After the game, I really wanted to get his jersey. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Del Piero had come on as a sub that game. Final whistle blew, and we were really proud of ourselves because we were down a man, and we held Italy to a one-one draw. So Del Piero comes up and he goes, "Hey, you know, you wanna?" I was like, ah, "No, nah, I'm gonna." No, I want him. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I went, walked past my. Yeah. Uh, me and Andrea already <laughs> talked about switching, even though I hadn't asked him yet. Sick. But so I basically had turned down Del Piero which I think people would be like, what the hell's wrong yeah, with you done, yeah. uh, to go get Andrea Pirlo. So I have Andrea Pirlo's jersey. And I'm sure he's washing his car with my jersey, but, uh, <laughs> but I have his and it's framed and it's a real special, special moment special for me. Special moment, man. Yeah. Wicked. I'm moving away from the USA national team. Mm -hmm. Starting off in the MLS, I mean, uh, quite a few years back, it, it was quite a small league. Mm -hmm. I mean, the money wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. How was it at a beginning stage entering <laughs> the MLS? The quality was really good because there was only 10 teams at the time and you had rosters of 18. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go above that. Now they have rosters of 26, 27, yeah. so it's diluted the talent pool a lot. And there's 20 teams in the league now. And so it really started with David Beckham. When he came in, mm. he gave us a water cooler topic. Like everybody knew who David he Beckham cool. was. He's pretty cool. He's cool. And that started to shift perception. I think he's really paved the road for, for other players to come in and, okay. and maybe at a younger age. Mm. Uh, Joe Vinco, who's gone on to play at Toronto FC, he's 27, played at Juventus, Italian national team. Like that's yeah. a really big sign, and I think more yeah, more players are going to look to to come to MLS at yeah. a younger age. But in comparison to let's say attendances mm -hmm. when you were playing, and now, what are the kind of disparities? What are the differences now in terms of attendance and the love for the game and attention? Uh, you go to Portland, you go to Seattle, you go to Toronto, uh, you go to any club now, and mm -hmm. they have their own supporters groups, and they take it uh, very seriously. And then you tie that in with the success of the U.S. men's national team. Mm. The better the U.S. men's national team does in major competitions like the World Cup, uh, it's just going to raise everything else mm. uh, with MLS or any of our youth soccer as well. Yeah. So you've done the MLS, you've done the World Cup, you've ticked all these boxes, and now, mm -hmm. I mean, you work on Kick TV, on YouTube, on TV, your face is everywhere. <laughs> what keeps you in love with the game, with football? Well, I'm passionate and I'm a fan. And anytime I traveled, either with the national team or preseason of MLS, we travel all over the world. Yeah. Uh, we would just go to hotels, uh, we go to the field, back to hotels and sleep, back to the field and train or play mm. games. And now I actually get to sit in the stands, I get to watch, I get to drink a beer, I get to hang out yeah. with fans, I get to really tap into that part that I never got to tap into before and I love it. What do you think we'll be doing in the next couple of years? I mean, I would love a few collabs. We have Copa America in Chile, Copa America in the States, year, yeah. the Euros. I mean, there's so many different events we can yeah. collaborate on. As long as we identify ourselves as the coolest soccer brand out there, then uh, people are going to want to come hang out with us. So. Copper 90, yeah, Kick TV. TV. We've joined forces, Family. baby, yeah? 2015, Year of the Truth, we're killing it. You Everyone just, out there. You just heard him earlier, I touched him. You, 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 yeah. Yeah, is that weird? It's not weird. <laughs> I'm touching Jimmy. We're friends <laughs> now, right? <laughs> no more enemy stuff. You stop in the comments. This year is just going to be amazing. Join our family. Join the family, Be a part man. of it. Be a part of it. What are we going to call it, like?